We're going to go in the chat and say, hey, can you find me CEOs in health care in New York City? And we'll send that off and the agent is thinking and it's grabbing the leads. So we'll go to the sheet where they'll be populated and you can see that it grabbed all of these leads from LinkedIn. We can click on one, CEO, New York City Health. Click on another one, CEO, New York City Health. So we can see the tool is working properly and you're able to ask the AI agent about any persona and it's gonna go out and find those leads for you and input them into this Google Sheet. If you want to download this NAN workflow for free, I left a link in the description for you. All right, now we can actually go into NAN and start building these workflows. So go to the top right and click Create Workflow and we'll name this one Google Scraper because it'll be responsible for actually going to Google and collecting that LinkedIn data. So in the top right corner, you're gonna see a plus icon, and this is where we add our trigger for the workflow. The one you want is called when executed by another workflow. So this type of trigger is basically saying that this workflow will get triggered and executed when another workflow tells it to or calls it. So in this relative scope, this workflow would be a child workflow, and the one calling it would be the parent workflow. And in our case, the parent workflow is going to be the one we create next, whose job is to host the AI agent. This AI agent will be thinking, how do I get this data from Google? And it'll see that it has access to this child workflow and will outsource the task of scraping Google and trigger this workflow. So as you can see here, the output is in JSON format. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. This is basically a standardized way of structuring and sending data around the internet. NAN initially doesn't know what the output JSON structure will look like. This is the default they put on these newly created nodes. So I'll paste in here what the structured output will actually look like. It's just a query. Uh, this is the query we'll be sending to Google. It has job title, company, industry, and location. All of these things are going to be generated by our AI agent. But for the meantime, we'll input this data ourselves. So job title can be CEO, company and industry will be um, healthcare, and location can be Seattle. And we'll save this. All right, now that this is done, we can go back and make a new node for OpenAI and message a model. Okay, and now we have to create a new credential if you don't already have one. So click create a new credential and here you see we need an API key. So just go to openai.com, create an account if you don't already have one and then click API platform and then go to the profile and API keys and then create new secret key and call it whatever you want and assign it to a project and then click create secret key. And now you can copy and paste this into the API key field here and click save. Okay, it should say connection tested successfully. So we can exit out of this and for resource, keep it as text for operation, keep it as message a model. And for model, you'll wanna choose GPT 4.1. So just search GPT-4.1 and it'll pop up here and choose the mini version because that's the cheapest and it'll do fine for this operation. I'm gonna go ahead and paste the prompt in so you don't have to watch me type it all out. It says parse the JSON query and output an object with these parameters, job title, company, industry, and location. So it's gonna grab these fields from the query. And so we'll have to pass this in as a message. So drag and drop query into prompt. And yeah, this is variable based on the output of the last node. And then make sure you um, set this to true output content as JSON. And if we execute this step, you'll see that the content is job title, company industry, and location, and it successfully extracted each of these values from the query. One more thing to do is change this role from user to system, because this is the actual instructions that we're feeding the system, whereas this is the prompt from the user. Okay, now that we're done with that node, we can move on to the next, which is going to be responsible for talking to Google. So we're going to do an HTTP request node. Uh, so for the method, you'll want to keep this as a get request. Uh, the reason we want it to be a get request is because we're not um, creating or updating or deleting data, we're just fetching data, we're getting it. So make that a get method. And then for the URL, you want to do HTTPS colon slash slash google.com slash search. And if I were to copy this URL and paste it into my browser, you would see the Google search page comes up. 
Now, the way this node works is when it makes a GET request for this URL we specify, the output will be HTML. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and it provides the structure and content of a website. It's basically a system of tags and elements that make up every web page on the internet. So the way web scrapers work is they capture this HTML from a website, and then they parse through it and try to find certain data points. And in our case, we want to find LinkedIn profile URLs. So we need to send a search query on Google. And the way we do that is by sending query params. So for the name, do Q. And for value, paste this. It's site colon LinkedIn.com slash IN. Now, if we were to paste this into Google, you'd see that only Google or only LinkedIn results show up. So it's a special way of telling Google to only pull up LinkedIn results. And then after this, we can pull in our job title, our company industry, and our location. And then if we put some spaces between them and a slash before them, it should be good. So now we have this variable uh, URL that is using the input from our AI agent in this search query. So we can copy this and just test it out in, um, in Google real quick. And it looks like we're not getting many results. Let me try to remove this slash here and see what happens. Okay, yeah, let's go back in the NAN and remove this slash and that should be good. All right, the next thing we wanna do is add a header to the request. So the name of it will be user-agent and the value I'm going to paste in, and I'll leave this in the description so that you can copy and paste it as well. When you're using NAN to send a request to Google, think of the user agent header as a name tag that tells Google who's knocking on its door. It's a small piece of info in your HTTP request that says, hey, I'm a specific app or tool, not a random bot. Google likes to know this because it helps them to make sure that the request is legit and not from someone trying to spam or scrape their site. If you don't include a user agent, Google might get suspicious and block your request, causing errors like 403 forbidden. Now, if you're planning on sending a lot of requests continuously, you might be better off using a third party web scraping API because they have other things set up to prevent getting blocked on these websites. But in our case, we're just doing a couple of HTTP requests and this user agent header should do the trick. Yeah, so it actually looks like our request is getting blocked by Google. It's telling us that we have to enable JavaScript, which means it knows we're not in a browser environment. So we're gonna have to find a workaround. We'll need to either set up a headless browser and we can do this with Docker. Maybe I'll make a video about that. But another workaround would be to use a third party that already has a browser environment set up where they'll make the request for you and then send you back that data. And all of these services are going to charge you monthly for using this service but a lot of them have a free tier. So we're going to use SERP API, which gives you 100 free credits every month, uh, credits as in requests. So this should work for our use case. So go back to NAN and paste in the SERP URL. And for the query, we can leave that the same. And then we'll need to add another parameter for our API key. Get your API key, go log in the SERP API and go to API key and copy it here. Okay, and go back to NAN and type API underscore key and then paste the key into the value field and then add another parameter for Google underscore domain and then google.com. And when you execute this step, you'll see that we have actual search results. Sweet. If we go to one of them, see that this is an executive leader in health and they're based in Seattle, which matches up to our query params. Now at this point, we have to figure out how to go through this JSON output and extract the LinkedIn profile URLs. So I think the best thing to do would be a code block node. So we wanna return a list of the profile URLs. So I'll do a return statement and we'll go to the JSON tab here find where the organic results array is, and we'll throw that into here. We can do dot map, and this will loop through each of the results. And I'll do a function here, and I'll do return result, 
dot link. Okay, so the output needs to be a uh, JSON, I'm guessing. So we'll assign this to a constant and then we will return an object with or JSON and then um, LinkedIn links. Assign that to results. And then if we execute this step, there are all our LinkedIn links. Awesome. Next, we'll want to add these links to a Google Sheet. So for the next node, search for Google Sheets and use the append row and sheet node. And then to set up a credential, we'll go to the Google Cloud console. If you don't have an account already, then create one and go to the console and click select the project, new project, name it whatever you want. Once it's created, you want to go, click into it and go to the credentials. Uh, it says here, remember to configure the OAuth consent screen. So you need to go there and configure this consent screen, get started. App name is NAN uh, leads, user support, use any email you want, and then click external next email address. Like I said, any email you want. Next, uh, agree to the terms and continue and click create. Then we can go back to credentials, add a new OAuth client ID. For the application type, select a web application. And for the authorized redirect URIs, you'll want to add one and copy this URI back in NAN and paste it into here and then click create. And now we have our client ID and client secret that we can copy and paste it back into NAN. And then click save. And before we sign into Google, we'll go back to the cloud and go to audience and do add users, then add the email of the Google Sheets account you want to use. Click save, then go to enable APIs and services, enable the Sheets API, and then go back to NAN and sign in with Google and select the account. Click continue, select all to give any and access to sheets. And there we go. You'll see account connected and you can exit out of this modal. From here, we can make sure the resource is sheet within document. The operation is a pen row. And this next one assumes that you already have a Google sheet made. So go to uh, your drive and create a new Google sheet and then choose it from this list. Looks like you need to enable the Google drive service in the cloud. So go back to the cloud and enable that. Once enabled, you can try again. And there we see our Google Sheet. Choose that. And for the sheet, just choose the one tab you have created. It says here that no columns found in Google Sheets. So go to your sheet and add a column uh, called leads. Then we can go here and retry. This, there we go. And then retry. Now we have another slight problem when we go to add a column. Uh, drag this in, it's going to add all the links to one cell and that's not ideal. So we want to go back to our code node and update the code like so. So instead of returning result.link, we'll do return JSON and then lead and result.link. Then we can just take results and return it like that. Now we can go back to our sheets node and remove this and then pull in a lead. Now it'll go through all of these and add a new row for each one. So if we go to the sheet after executing, we can see that we have all of our leads in our sheet. So it looks like this child workflow is done. It does everything we need it to do. The last node will be a response. So we'll do edit fields and then fields to set. We'll name this response and we'll say done. So this response is to tell the parent workflow that the child workflow is done executing. The last thing we'll do is go into the trigger node and edit this JSON. We'll remove the CEO, the healthcare, and the Seattle. From now on, this will be dynamic data coming in from the parent workflow. So now that the child workflow tool is done, we can start on the agent workflow. And there's good news. This is going to be a lot simpler than the other one. Um, we just have to add a trigger here uh, on chat message and then attach an AI agent. There we go. 
So to use that chat trigger, you just click this open chat button here and you can type and this will send the chat directly to the AI agent. In order for the AI agent to work, we have to give it a brain. So click on chat model and search for chat GPT. So open AI chat model, and then you can choose the GPT 4.1 and you should already have that credential set up from previously. Adding this simple memory is good because without it, the model would forget what we were talking about every time you ask it a new question. So now the model will have this memory, which will give it more context on the conversation and therefore give you better results. So now let's add the tool that is going to allow this AI agent to talk to the child workflow that we built. So click the plus icon and click call any end workflow tool. We'll call this one uh, leads grabber. And then we'll give it a good description. Um, use this tool to grab LinkedIn leads. Then for the workflow, choose the one that we just built. I called mine Google Scraper. Okay, then go back to the child workflow. You'll need to add in this uh, workflow input schema. So the name should be query and the type should be string. Then you can go back to the flow and add workflow input to send and click on query. Over here to the right, you'll see let the model define this parameter and you'll click that. And then add a description that looks just like this so that we tell the AI agent how to structure the input query. We can go back and save this workflow. Now we'll go and test it out by sending a chat. We'll say, hey, can you find me um, CEOs in healthcare in Chicago? Okay, it's running and now it's grabbing the leads. Let's go to the sheets and see if it worked. Yep, we have new um, users in here. So let's click on one and see if it worked properly. CEO healthcare in Chicago. Okay, try another one. CEO Chicago healthcare, amazing. Okay, we're gonna do one more test. We'll say, hey, can you find me CTOs in Tampa for finance companies? It's working, it's grabbing the leads. <clears throat> All right, responding. Found CTOs in Tampa for finance companies. All right, let's go to the Google Sheet and check these out. Corporate finance, Tampa, Florida. Nice. Executive business and technology leader, Tampa, Florida. Awesome. One more. All right. COO. Close enough. Greater Tampa Bay. Awesome. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. If you enjoyed this, then leave a like on the video and go check out my other AI automation videos on this channel. Also, feel free to leave a comment suggesting a video idea and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more AI automation videos in the future. I'll see you in the next video.